Hey everybody, it's Nick from Hawk Pro Detailing, where my goal is to make you a better detailer. Today we have a couple vehicles in the shop for two-step corrections and ceramic coatings, but today I want to talk about this BMW 3 Series. It's 13 years old, and the goal here is to get a mirror shine while maintaining the integrity of the clear coat. Now if you take a close-up look at this BMW, you're going to see all kinds of swirls and scratches. Uh, there's an area on the front where he had the clear bra or the PPF that was just removed. And what we need to do on these quarter panels is blend the two spots. We want this BMW to look better than the day it rolled off the showroom floor. And we're going to finish it off with a professional grade ceramic coating. They say political campaigns are like an MRI of your soul. Kind of a random thing to say but i feel like black paint is also an mri of your polishing technique and i am by no means a guru but i i really want to drill down try to get the scratches out without taking off too much clear coat i want to see what kind of results we can get and i want to bring you along for the ride All right, you might call me a little crazy here, but I am doing some spot sanding, and that's because I know myself. I'm gonna wanna go after scratches, and I'm gonna get too aggressive. The paint's gonna get too hot, it's gonna swell. We do not want heat as we go about polishing a vehicle. So let me tell you what I'm looking at here. I see a lot of these swirls, right, in circular motions, you can call those spider webs, but then I also see scratches like this, right, that are not in the pattern, and so to me, those are going to be more of those random, deeper scratches. Um, with the 3M Trizac paper, I don't actually need it to be all that wet. I may hit the panel with one little spray. You don't want it surfing over the paint with too much lubrication. You really do want to actually sand this paint. Um, Jamie Gonzalez actually showed me this trick where you put your little block a little bit above the sandpaper, which a lot of guys probably want to do this. But he said this helps you get a, a more even... Uh, sanding pattern without driving it in with your finger because you do want even and then I just typically lead with a, a corner and try to stay in uh, in one kind of pattern and you do want to hear that right you do want to hear the actual sanding and this is on a curved panel and I may not know exactly what I'm doing but you're always wanting to sand to improve not remove so you're gonna see clear coat that I've removed right there. And so I'm just going to spot sand around the vehicle, try not to be too aggressive, stop about there, not going to use any more aggressive sandpaper than that. Rounding the edge, even if it doesn't come out once I compound this and polish it out, it'll be perfectly acceptable for a showroom shine. You might be scared of wet sanding paint, and if I'm honest with you, you should be scared. Jason Kilmer, the wet sanding guru in our industry, told me that he gets nervous every time he puts sandpaper to paint. So with that said, I'm sanding to improve, not remove. And even on some of these spots that I've sanded and then buffed out, they don't look perfect and I'm okay with that. Um, but I do want to show you what I'm doing to remove what looks like a crazy blemish, this white residue. Oh my gosh, I've ruined the paint. Um, I'm just going to hit this with compressed air. Now don't be afraid of this blue. That was from a single stage paint job that was blue paint. So it stained my pad, but the pad's perfectly clean. I like this Oberic pad. It's got a little bit more of an interface to it, so it's not as aggressive. I'll take it or leave it. But what I like over like a Meguiar's um, cutting microfiber is the strands are longer, so it can take more polish, compound, residue, and keep on trucking. And because I have a mini and it's such a small pad and it gunks up really fast, I like having more fibers. Um, because I was out of compound and I had to go to AutoZone, this whole thing is being done with M105. You can get it at AutoZone. I learned this trick on Apex Detail, right? M105, oh my gosh, it's so dusty. You want a detail spray? I usually would want a larger fan, larger fan. There we go. Larger fan, get the pad moist. You don't want it super wet. And then I would spray the panel. And the only problem here is you're not going to get dusting, but if you get it too wet, you might get sling. Um, I would prime the pad the right way here, use a glove or a little butter knife, whatever. Prime the pad, make sure all the fibers are evenly coated. Um, but I'm just going to show you kind of how I do this. So the pad is primed with M105. It's kind of a moist pad. There's a little bit of moisture on the surface. 
So this is where I wet sanded in sort of an even pattern over a scratch. I've got it slightly moist with my detail spray. I just put an ounce of wipeout in with 32 ounces of distilled water. And then you're gonna see how easy it is to remove this. What you've done with sandpaper is created a very jagged scratch pattern, right? Because you're leveling the clear coat. So you have this giant scratch. You're trying to level the clear coat so that scratch is a little bit less giant, right? You've done this entire thing just to make the scratch less giant. But by doing that, you've created your own aggressive scratch pattern that you've leveled. So we're trying to make each scratch pattern a little bit less aggressive as we finesse it out. So this is step number two. It's an aggressive pattern to get rid of our more aggressive pattern, but I'm gonna show you how to remove uh, wet sanding marks with a compound and a microfiber pad. So I don't love 105, but it is what it is. If you have a compound that has easier wipe off, great. Um, I do spray a little bit of detail spray into my towel because sometimes this gets real caked on there. But this is what happened. The paint got a little hot, not super hot, just a little bit warm. Just a little bit of detail spray on here, maybe even on the paint as well, just because again, 105 is a bear to wipe off. And what you see there is haze. So here you've got a sanding mark. I sanded this way. Here you've got the paint that I haven't touched yet. And then right here, you've got the paint that I've compounded to remove a sanding mark. We're still going to polish this, and this is going to look way better than this. So what I'm focusing on in this first step within the step is just trying to get rid of the haze and ticks. I'm not going for the perfect tick removal. And I see some areas that maybe I didn't compound out perfectly. To be honest with you, I think I can get away with it. Um, you want your upper panels to be really dialed in, but from here below, you know, it's, a, it's sort of a judgment call. But if I didn't get some scratches out there, I'm, I think I'm gonna live with it at this point. I might throw my uh, polisher up between four and five. I'm gonna do a little bit of pressure here. And again, it's to remove all the crap, all that haze. Not quite getting the perfect finish just yet. By most people's standards, this is great. Um, but again, if you do see ticking, there's different things you can do. You can blow out your pad, you can use a totally fresh pad, you can do like one firm pass. I just see a couple things that the customer will never see. I just see a little bit of ticking right there. I'm gonna try one more time, just a nice couple of firm passes, just to shave off whatever imperfections might be left from my dual action polisher. And sometimes you try a step and it gets worse. So it's just one of those where, do you need to spend this much time? Probably not, but just light pressure. So I can't tell you how to finish out black paint perfectly. You're gonna have to deal with those ticks on your own. Whatever's left here, even after an IPA wipe down, looks pretty much flawless to me. It's gonna look flawless uh, to almost every customer, especially on this paint job. So you see how we took that hazy mess and gave it that mirror shine. Is it perfect? No, I don't think perfection is ever possible, and I don't think that I'm probably capable of it. But getting to 90% is a stellar result. It's probably more than you need to uh, for a lot of you know polish and wax jobs. And even for a coating, I think my customer, for a 13-year-old vehicle, is going to be stoked. Part of restoring a 13-year-old vehicle is dealing with this clear bra. Now, the owner had the clear bra removed. Of course, he got that nasty, just front bumper clear bra. It looked horrible, I'm glad it's gone. But the difference in paint is huge. And this is not gonna be a small thing. This is like get your heart beating, scary, wet sanding, two-step wet sanding. So distilled water, wipe out, rinseless wash of choice. Uh, with one ounce to 32 ounces of water in here, that's a very uh, lubricated, 
dilution. But some people use distilled water when they sand. Um, the options are endless. See the line is starting to blend for sure. I don't want to get too much more aggressive. Again, it's it's all about you know sanding to improve, not remove. And yeah, you do want the sandpaper to grab, but I just want to be as careful as I can. So these aren't the prettiest sanding marks in the history of the world, but what we're trying to get is results and we're trying to be safe. And what I will tell you is when it's wet, you can see that line more, but it's still in there, um, but it's definitely going away. So we'll just take it a little bit further if we can, but not trying to be a hero, not trying to be a hero. Okay, if this doesn't scare you, then you're crazy. We're now gonna go to 3M Trizact. Um, this is the 3000, it's got the foam interface. So it's just slightly moist. I'm not gonna spray um, any lube on there. And it almost looks like this is the line, it's not. This is actually the line here. So what I'm trying to do is refine the previous step. Using a small KXK dynamic sanding block here, I'm gonna get more aggressive than I thought I would need to and this was very scary. You've got two sections of paint, one covered by clear bra for 13 years or so, the other exposed to the sun. Now we can blend these general colors with a compounding step. What we can't do without very aggressive technique here is actually get rid of that line. So you're seeing me use 3000K, that Trizac disc. This is not a super aggressive step. You're starting to see some of that haze up here on the paint. Of course, those are sanding marks that we're introducing. So because I'm using M105 and it's dusty as heck, I like to give the panel a little bit of a detail spray. Pad primed a little bit with detail spray. A lot of pressure, but moving quickly so I don't get the paint too hot. Now let's see what this looks like. It's gonna show up like a line until it dries out a little bit. Where the heck did the line go, guys? I have no idea. I think it's gone. Now I'm gonna put my yellow medium cut pad with my Oberk Supreme Polish here. And I'm just going to make sure the backing plate continues to spin, trying to blend out this section to that mirror shine. Trying to make sure the pad continues to spin and I tilted it because it wasn't gonna wanna spin without me tilting it along that edge. And again, that's to keep the pad and the backing plate spinning and not stalling out. We finally blended it, polished it real nicely. It was the most aggressive step by far of anything we did here as I check it with the light uh, to make sure that we are able to blend this particular section before we put a ceramic coating on it and deliver it for the customer. I think the client is gonna be stoked. The PPF lines are gone. We took back time. It's not perfect, but it sure does look good. I hope you enjoyed this journey from thrashed to cashed. We're gonna pick up some money He's gonna love his car, and I hope you enjoyed watching it all happen. Again, it's Nick from Hawk Pro Detailing, where my goal is to make you a better detail.